Okay, Ruler, settle down. Ruler School is brought to you by Odyssey Games, where you can go to get pre-orders of all the upcoming Force of Will sets, as well as releases of previous sets after they come out. CCGprime.com, with over 100,000 Force of Will singles, as well as out-of-print boxes from the past, and TCG accessories, as well as FowlLibrary.com, a wonderful resource for deck lists, article discussions, and more. Check them out at FowlLibrary.com, as well as these amazing patrons. Special thanks to guest lecturer member, Vite Raman. Thank you for your support. Class is in session. Hey there guys, welcome back to the Deck Profile with yours truly, Paul Reisman. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at one of our more recent Wander Deck Profiles just before we get into the holiday season. This is the Zeus Alice Palace deck that uh, Josh Mostart recently piloted here for the channel in one of our feature matches. And one of the things you're gonna notice right away is that uh, he's running Almerius because he cannot run Feasting, otherwise he said he would have gone into the Feasting direction, but of course it's banned in Wanderer. Um, but Almerius is not completely useless, right? I mean, this card is actually a really solid six age on her own. Uh, probably the third best, maybe tied with my list for being the third best. It's kind of kind of hard to say, but Almerius is still pretty good on her own. Uh, she's able to get you to 7,000 life at the start of the game, and then when you flip her, she's able to get back one of your Zeus Alice's that have gone to the graveyard, which is probably going to happen. She doesn't get natural barrier. That's why we play an Altusing Secret Hideout, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anyway, Almerius is just really solid, and she's a tag ruler, which means you're also going to be playing Mujdart. Now, Mujdart in this uh, was mostly used to sort of filter for the combo pieces that you wanted, especially your uh, your Alice's are really gonna be important for this deck to pop off uh, next to uh, <laughs> your diversity palaces, right? So you, you need to find these combo pieces and then we have a few tricks in order for us to do that. Some very classic Force of Will stuff. All of that being said, this is a very classic Force of Will deck, and I know we've talked about this on the podcast, and I know Jeremy was talking about this in the feature match, but nothing goes off right away like we have in modern Force of Will. So this is kind of a throwback to the old school way of playing the deck. Anyway, so we have Dark Alice Rabbit Princess, probably one of the best, if not the best, white card ever printed in the game. Uh, draw. Uh, banisher discard, draw, banisher discard. This card is amazing, it enables so much, and it just digs through your deck super fast. One of the best cards, in my opinion, in the whole in the whole deck is Charlotte, Inheritor of the Seventh Power. Now this card gives you access to a whole host of stuff in your sideboard, but it's got quick cast, it's got barrier black, it's flying, which means you're gonna be getting in six damage here and there. It's gonna be a little bit of chip damage, but in general, this card is amazing. It's a human, it's an angel, and it's a hero. So it adds something to Diversity Palace. It gives flying to your other resonators. This card just slotted in really well with this deck. So it's not a secondary win condition necessarily, but it can be there to help you get around um, uh, things your opponent puts in your way if they do get rid of your Alice's. This card is just amazing. And we'll talk about her more when we get to the side deck, because that's where she really shines. Next, we have Flute. Captive Dragonoid Child plus Group of Comets. Uh, this card, I, I predict, is gonna get really popular soon uh, with the advent of Odin. Odin is gonna break this card in my opinion, but I think as a mana dork, Flute has always been really good, especially because she's attached to this really potent um, four drop wrath effect that you know you just get on top of her being, uh, just being a mana dork in general with barrier nonetheless. Uh, flute in this deck enables so much. It allows you to play your Charlotte on your opponent's turn, your Dark Alice on your opponent's turn, helps you to judgment for your rulers, especially Almerius, and then it helps to pay for the next card on this list, Moonbeam Butterfly. This card is fantastic. It gets you access to things like, well, your Alice's, but also things like um, uh, your Altusing Secret Hideout. This card is super good. And because it searches for additions, you can also get your Light Palace from the deck, which is really strong. Um, although Josh is considering taking this out, it kind of worked for what he wanted to do. This card was, was getting him there, and it was pretty great. Of course, we have Cancels in the deck to stop your opponent from doing anything that would hamper your plans, as well as Lorites to stop your opponent from doing things when they want to do things. And then Welser, because you have six sages, and it's a really good way of just stopping them from doing anything, especially in the Cardlina matchup. 
you have your three light palace and it's probably i'm guessing he's only playing three because four can get a little cloggy sometimes same thing with zeus alice here uh, this card is amazing it gains all races in all zones that's very important uh, not just because it uses um, the boost from Diversity Palace, but because it works really well with Campanella. You can just pay to search your deck for a moon and then just put it into the field. Uh, Zeus Alice is a moon because she's all races in all zones, including the deck. So you just have a two drop, get your Zeus Alice. Congratulations. For some removal, we have Mermaid Thunder Parasol, which I think is a really decent deck uh, deck option for removal if you're playing Moosh Dart. Already, you know, you just need a, a very few amount of cards in hand for this card to become devastating. Um, and if you don't need it, you can just ship it away. And if you do use it, it goes back in the deck. So it's a really decent card. Uh, we should be looking at this card, in my opinion, going forward, because even though it can be canceled by Girion, um, I still think this card is an amazing option for blue, especially going into a format where we do not have um, a lot of dual stone answers for going into blue for um, removal. Blue has a good answer here. Definitely keep an eye out for this as you go into the new Frontiers format. We already talked about Altasing Secret Hideout, but it gives a barrier to everything, which is super nice. And then one Duet of Light, and this is just a good way of not only bringing back your Zeus Alice with that Almerius, but gaining some additional life, uh, putting some plus one, plus one counters on stuff um, to give your J Resonators a little bit more of a push, but then also they won't die if you decide to use um, a group of Comets to blow up the board. It's pretty nice. A group of Comets only blows up things that do not have plus one, plus one counters on them, so there's a little bit of utility there as well. So before I get into the magic stones, which are, you know, honestly, we'll just do them really quick. Four six age stones, four gusting skies, two light vapors. Very, very straightforward. You're playing tag rulers, and even if you're not, this card is amazing. So <laughs> just play this card. Um, into the sideboard we go. We have two Pierre the Godspeed Archer for a little bit of additional aggro, but also for getting rid of some additions your opponent might have. If they want to uh, be aggro toward you, that's gonna suck for them. But also it has flying swiftness, which are really good keyword bubbles. So that, you know, if you do um, put something under, if you have this plus some other stuff underneath the Versity Palace, Pierre will give them those symbol skills. Uh, one Lumia, Princess of Rebirth, and uh, Wings of Light and Darkness. This is just a good way of um, being able to like cheat something out so you can like get a whole bunch of life back or just have it as a removal spell it unfortunately does not work with charlotte because this is technically a two cost card um but it is there and i think he was just maybe experimenting with this to see how many he actually wanted to play brad max mage this card you bring it out against uh any carlina deck and they're gonna have a hard time uh this card is amazing plus it brings back your uh your number 13s which is really nice Josh was tooling with uh, Nameless Knight because this card is super fun against Virgil. Um, <laughs> all of a sudden, uh, they lose their Virgil and if they end up playing another one, they're gonna have a hard time using the effects. Uh, so this card, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, we might have better tools against Virgil now. Virgil might go down in playability and wander with the new ban list, but also the new set, so who knows? Fountain of the Oblivion Moon. It's a moon, comes out with Campanella. The card's amazing. Uh, you can basically just shut off one of your opponent's cards, and that's really, really solid. Plus, you can just draw a card for fun. Why not? Now we get into the part of the side deck that I think is the most uh, important part of the whole deck, because this is basically a whole nother set of tools that this deck gets access to because of Charlotte. So, I'm a Deus Holy Spear. If you're playing in any sort of tournament where Belial exists, Having this might be really useful for you. Even having one or two in the main board might be something you want to see as well. But in Wanderer format, it could potentially also be dead. Um, so just be very aware of that. You'll see that in my game, I had two of these in the main board and uh, I was not playing against any deck with God's Arts or Tokens. So this card was just literally terrible. <laughs> so just use this uh, carefully, but if it's in the sideboard and you have a Charlotte, it's very safe, a very good option. Yggdrasil's Grace, another really solid option to uh, flicker out one of your resonators to protect it, um, to reactivate trigger effects like your Campanella to get another Zeus Alice. This card is pretty fun to have in the sideboard. Uh, Schrodinger's Cry as a, as a removal option. This card's really solid for that as well, and it's quick cast. 
Charlotte's Light Transformation magic to sort of blink effects from your opponent's J rulers or resonators, uh, making them really small and able to, easy to get over. Awakening of Zero to give your board eternal, Intimidation to protect yourself from resonator attacks, Dispelling Stone to blow up more additions and draw a card. Interesting thing about this card, you get to choose where this card goes. It can either go back into the side deck to be used later, or it can go into your main deck after um, after it resolves. So that's just a little, neat little ruling thing. You're probably just going to choose to have it in your side deck though, so don't even worry about it. Crystallization is just like a hard uh, destroy that thing. It's dead now. You might want to replace this with something like Separation of Fades or another one drop answer that's come out. Maybe um, Wings, uh, Winds of Asgard, which is just another new card that has come out. But at the time, he had Crystallization. The card's interesting. And then, of course, Resuscitating Will. Uh, this card has been facilitating OTKs in the game ever since it came out. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, super fun, super interesting card. And that rounds out the whole deck profile. One thing we were considering as we were looking at this list again is potentially shifting the deck to be focused on the Rune Ruler Adam Psychart, which I can, you know, honestly, I'll just put this on the screen. <laughs> this makes a lot of sense for me to just put on the screen. Uh, here, live on Ruler School for you all. Haha. -ha. See, can we see it? Can I see it? So this is your Divinity Ruler, uh, works with the Zeus Alice support already, plus gives you a starting hand of five cards, which is really kind of fun. Um, so this is another option for you to go with this deck, but we decided to keep it in sort of, uh, into the Reflect Refrain sort of feeling um, for this classic Force of Will feature match. But anyway, guys, uh, this has been Paul. Hope you enjoyed the deck. Let us know what you think down below in the comment section. What would you do differently? What did you enjoy? Uh, would you take this in a completely different direction? Let us know. Again, down in the comment section down below. But until next time, guys, this has been Paul, signing off.